I want to talk about the talk. I think you know what the talk is. That's the discussion that black parents have with their black children when they go out and they face the possibility of running to those racist policemen. And this is at least the construct that we're always presented with when we hear about the talk. It's about race. The problem I've always had with that is that when I turned 16, my father had the talk with me. And as to quote Joe Biden, I ain't black and neither was my father. So the question was, if race wasn't involved, why was he having the talk with me? And does that not raise the question that maybe the talk's not really all about race after all? Now, let me get this out there, because my father, who sat me down when I was 16 years old, was, in fact, himself a policeman. He'd been on force for about 20 years, so he was no rookie. This guy was a, a veteran. And he sat me down. I remember the first thing he told me. He said, listen, you have to understand, like all professions, there are good cops and there are bad cops, just as there are good doctors and bad doctors, good teachers and bad teachers, good lawyers and bad lawyers. You name it. He said, it's the same. Good cops and bad cops. And he said, you have to understand, cops also have good days and bad days. He said, you know, you don't know what's the cop who's stopped you and he's coming up to you. You don't know what happened the day before. Maybe his wife took the kids and left him. Maybe somebody he went to the academy with was shot and killed. You don't know. You don't know what happened to stop just before... He stopped you. Maybe he was assaulted. Maybe he was called names. Maybe he had a really bad time. You really don't know his state of mind. You have to also understand he doesn't understand your state of mind. He doesn't know who you are. You may look like an innocent college kid. You could be a, a drug dealer. You might be armed to the teeth. He doesn't know that when he stops your car for whatever the reason was that he stopped it. And that's why you have to be careful because you don't. he doesn't know about you you don't know about him. And his primary goal in life as a cop when he leaves the door in the morning is to come home that night in one piece alive. He then proceeded to go through the routine with me. You know, get the window down before the cop reaches your car. When he gets there, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, officer, no, officer. Both hands under steering wheel where he can see them. He's probably going to ask for your uh, card. And glove box, registration card. He said, just don't reach for it. Tell him, the, it's in the glove box. May I get it? He'll say, yes. You reach with your right hand, keep your left hand on the wheel so he knows where both your hands are at the same time because he, so he doesn't know. You could reach for something with your right hand and get your left and grab a gun. He doesn't know what's going on with you. And the same if you need to do something with the left hand, keep the right hand on the wheel, ask before you do anything. He said, you do those things, you'll minimize the possibility that you're going to have a bad experience with the policeman. Doesn't mean you won't get a ticket. Doesn't mean he might not give you some lip. But, you know, there's no point in arguing with him. You don't want to end up getting arrested, hit, shot for a stupid traffic stop. So he said, just follow those rules and you'll probably be all right. And that was pretty much it. And then he went on and he explained some of the things that had happened, stories he had heard, examples of things that went wrong. And he said, you know, the, the cop is very nervous. And he said this is especially true of rookie cops because they haven't done as much. They've heard a lot. They don't have a lot of experience. They don't know the things to look for. Every traffic stop to them is potentially the end of their life. And in many ways, that's true. And that's what you have to understand. And that's pretty much what I did. And I used to get stopped a lot. This was in the late 60s, early 70s. I had long hair, wire rim glasses. I looked like a hippie. I dressed like a hippie. And there I was driving my father's car. He owned it and it had a damned FOP, Fraternal Order Police sticker, on the plate. Cops would see me. He can't be the son of a policeman. Let's pull him over. He probably stole the car. I used to get stopped at least once a week on my way to Temple where I, where I went, did my undergraduate work. It was a routine. I've known a lot of cops in my life. Two of the guys I went to high school with became police. They were both shot, both in ambushes. One was killed. The other one was disabled for the rest of his life. I had other friends I knew 
who were cops. I got to know many cops during uh, my years of working in Center City, Philadelphia. And I met good cops. I met crooked cops, cops who I remember explained to me how they could get rid of money if they got stopped and somebody spotted them taking a bribe. I mean, I knew all kinds of cops, good and bad. I can't say I ever knew one who was, you know, overtly and racist in a sense of hostility where they were looking to deal with African-Americans. Most of the ones I knew didn't even want to deal with them. I actually remember one time one guy actually gave a guy time to get away to avoid doing paperwork. You know, as he said to me, Mike, you've seen too many police police shows. This isn't police story. This is real life. And that was was pretty much it. So, I mean, being a policeman is, is a it's a dangerous job. I mean, my father went through his whole career. He, I don't think he even, he certainly never shot anybody. He never killed anybody. I don't even know if he ever fired at anybody or drew the gun on anyone. I did see pictures of him using a club once. But other than that, I mean, it's just, that's the, the reality of police work. It's not often all that exciting. It's not police story. So that's the problem I have with this discussion about the talk, because it's always portrayed as related to racial problems in this country. And it's not. I'm not saying that there aren't racial problems in the country. I'm not saying there aren't racist cops. But the idea that, you know, you need to have this talk with your children because they're black, is just wrong. All parents should have this talk with their children, no matter what race they are. It doesn't matter what color they are. Otherwise, what was my father doing? And I'm sure my father is not the only policeman who had the talk with his son. Are you any white policeman? Are you any Hispanic policeman? I had this talk. I'm not a policeman. I had similar talk with my own children about how to handle themselves when they ran into a confrontation with the police. And again, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean black people don't run into racist cops or have racial problems with cops or the cops aren't more likely to do this or that. But I'm saying you can't portray the talk as prima facie evidence of racial problems. Because if that was true, my father wouldn't have had to talk with me. I wouldn't have had the talks with my children. And that's the reality. We do have a problem, not just with police in this country, we have a problem with all professions in this country. I mean, I don't want to get into, you know, medical profession, but I've had problems with doctors. I mean, I had one doctor who praised what I was doing when I started losing weight. And then when my kidneys started to fail, I went to a nephrologist and she said, what you were doing, you were destroying your kidneys. You put the final nail in your kidney coffin. And why didn't your doctor tell you to stop? You shouldn't have been doing any of that. So there's, there's a lot of bad doctors out there. And let's be honest, medical malpractice kills many more black people in this country than cops. I mean, the numbers aren't even anywhere near what police kill. If police kill two dozen African-Americans in the course of a year, that pales against the somewhere between 30 and 40,000 African-Americans who die at the hands of medical malpractice. Bad doctors. Now, you, do we associate that with racism? If you want. But why aren't, why isn't BLM protesting in front of hospitals? Because bad doctors kill more black people than bad cops. And both doctors and cops take an oath to serve, to save. But they don't always do it. Was it just my dad? Did your dad, your mother maybe, have the talk with you? Let me know in a comment. If you have other observations on this video, leave them in the comments. Please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you know uh, when I post new videos. Share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep resisting and keep fighting.